hey there on today's video i'll be talking about my unpopular knitting opinions so i've always loved watching the style of video and i've loved reading the comments where people add their own unpopular opinions it's literally my favorite thing to watch on youtube so i decided to do a video on that same topic um i'll be happy if you'll include your own unpopular knitting opinions and the things that you really enjoy doing out there so um you'll notice that my first three opinions are kind of linked they somehow are related in a way so the first one is i love ripping i love ripping and to prove how much i love ripping um I've recently launched two patterns, the Leruo cardigan and the Leruo top, and they are both like 100% ripping. I enjoyed knitting the two patterns. I never got tired of ripping. I could have done another one if I had another similar idea that required ripping. I love knitting some ripping. For me, that's the that's my favorite mindless stitch that I can knit out there, and. Um, that kind of links to the second one because my second um, unpopular opinion is I'd rather knit stockinette stitch back and forth than knit it in the round. I struggle to knit stockinette stitch in the round. I get bored. Of course, there's always going to be uh, projects where you have to have a lot of stockinette stitch. And with those projects, I normally uh, check out how much, uh, how many rows I need to, how many rounds I need to knit in order to complete an inch. And I just put on stitch markers just to keep it interesting. And adding those stitch markers kind of give me something to look forward to after every inch. But more than anything, I'd rather knit um, back and forth than knit stockinette stitch in the round. So I guess that's not a very popular one because most people would rather need stock net stitch in the round, but I'd rather, I, I just prefer having something different, some different uh, stitches to work. If I'm peeling the, every other round or every other row, then it just doesn't feel so tedious for me. And then the next one is, I don't like continental knitting. So um, mostly you hear people say that continental knitting is the quickest but I've never enjoyed knitting, continental knitting. I can do that style of knitting. When I first learned how to knit, I was more of an English thrower. But my favorite technique is um, uh, right hand flicking. That's my all time favorite because even with peeling, I, I still move my hand the same way. So there's no difference really between knitting and peeling for me. And I think that's why I love ripping. And that's also why I love knitting stocking a stitch back and forth. Because I don't really feel that is different for me to knit or to pearl. So that's why I say the first three are, are very much linked because it's all about knitting and pearling. And I prefer English style. Uh, okay, I don't know if it's English style, but anyway, the right hand flicking because I can knit and pearl just the same way. So those are the first three that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the next one. I'd rather knit with a commercial lit dyed yarn than use a hand dyed yarn where I have to alternate skeins. I do not like alternating skeins. I've done that with a lot of projects, including this uh, pullover that I'm wearing, but I just don't enjoy it. And I'll just rather knit with one ball of yarn at a time. You know, when it's finished, I tie on the next one, keep going. I like some. I like the look of um, hand dyed yarn, for instance, here that it's got more character than the very solid, uh, simple, plain, um, commercially dyed yarn. But working with more than one ball of yarn sometimes is very trying. So that's why I prefer just working with that uh, commercially dyed yarn sometimes. I think it's like 50 50 when it comes to my projects, but. During the process of knitting, I normally prefer just having one ball of yarn at a time. But I still love the look of the tonal yarn that you get from hand dyeing. But technically speaking, I would rather just have one ball of yarn attached to my work and I just knit. Yeah. And then the next one. Okay, this is going to be very ridiculous, I think, for most people. I prefer knitting the second sleeve or the second sock than the first one. So uh, for most people, they'll, they get bored when they have to work the second sleeve or the second sock. Yeah, it, it does 
get kind of tedious when you're knitting any project, whether it's a sweater or socks. But the reason why I love knitting the second sock or the second um, sleeve is that I don't have to do much thinking. For instance, with this one, I had to do some decreases. So all I have to do, because with sleeves and even with socks, you have to keep trying on to see if you've reached the, the right length. So all I have to do is to count how many times I've done the decreases after how many rounds and how many uh, rounds I did for the cuff and then put that in the knots on my phone then when I'm knitting the second sleeve I don't even have to think and that's the same even with socks I just have to count the number of uh, pattern repeats that I've done up to the point where I do the heel flip and then I do the same up to the point where I do the toe and that's it so I've noticed that the second sleeve or the second sock moves much faster for me than the first one so that's why i prefer knitting the second sleeve and the second sock i don't buy yarn just for the stash so i generally do not have a yarn stash all the yarn that i have is for specific projects that are coming in the next season for instance i've got yarns for the fall and the winter um, projects but i do not just buy yarn to build my stash or buy yarn without any specific project i do have some leftovers because mostly when i buy yarn i sometimes have an extra skein or two particularly if i'm buying for a sweater you never know how much you will use so i only have just um the yarn for the next season but i don't own yarn that i have no specific projects for or i won't buy yarn without any specific um project that I want to do with that yarn. So my yarn is, stash is very small. It's right there behind me. There isn't really too much of it. Of course, there's some yarn in some project bags for some projects that I'm currently working on, but otherwise I keep my yarn to the minimum because whenever I have a, a new idea for a project, I've noticed that I rarely go for what's already in my stash. Each project has to have its own uh, type of yarn depending on how I want the final fabric to look like. So having a stash is really a bit of a complication for me and I don't normally have any stash. Um, the next one, I don't mind knitting sweaters in any direction. So of course most of the patterns that I design are worked from the top down. That's generally the most convenient method but I don't mind working sideways bottom up in pieces as long as I get the final product that I want so I think I'm more of a product knitter than a process knitter it doesn't I don't really care much about the process as long as the final product is what I want and I can enjoy wearing it I think for the longest time I was more of a process knitter but I noticed that I didn't enjoy wearing the stuff that I knitted because I was focused more on enjoying the knitting process more than actually what I get at the end of the day. So now I, I mainly focus on what I really want to get in the process of knitting and I try by all means to make that as enjoyable as possible. I still enjoy knitting everything that I knit. I don't design or knit stuff that I won't really enjoy knitting. but. Um, I, I don't really mind which direction I need, even if it's a modular construction where everything just gets joined in different directions. As long as I'm going to enjoy wearing that piece for the longest time, I'm going to need it. So that's uh, number seven. And then the next one is, I prefer a short row heel over a um, heel flap and gusset. So I think the heel flap and gusset is the one that's mainly preferred by most knitters. At least I've done a poll on Instagram and most people prefer the heel flap and gusset, but I prefer the short draw heel. Reasons being, um, my socks normally get torn at the heel first than anywhere else. And I've noticed that it's much easier to fix a short draw heel than a heel flap because all I have to do is to just pick out all the stitches for that short draw and then uh, re-pick the stitches around the foot of this around that area of the heel and do an afterthought heel and then my sock is good as new and fixed so it makes it so much easier and I mentioned this on my previous podcast as well that I love a short row heel when I want to do a contrast color just on the heel 
and then you just have that pop of color that doesn't interrupt the flow of the sock or of the pattern and it also works the same way i think when you're working um with when you're doing color work socks or even using some mosaic knitting i just love the fact that the short row heel just fits in there and the sock continues flowing without uh, any differences in the look of the foot because of the extra stitches that you cast on when you're doing a heel flap and gusset so i love a short row heel and of course i know with most people that heel is not very comfortable depending on the shape of the foot but both socks work well for me so that's why i normally gravitate towards the short row heel and then the next point is i love products that projects that i need with yarns held together even though this can be quite expensive and i don't do a lot of them like that because i also do not want to spend way too much on yarn but i've noticed that sometimes in order to get a certain type of fabric particularly if you want a light fabric even with a a thicker gauge a, a thicker yarn weight gauge you still get a very light fabric just by holding two strands of yarn together and the look and the feel of it is so different from what you would get if you used the actual weight of that yarn for instance i did the mbalentle pull over it's two strands of mohair held together it's a lace weight garment light and fluffy and i remember i swashed with a dk weight yarn but the fabric that i got from that didn't feel or look the same as what i got from two strands so even though it's quite expensive and it's not necessarily something that i would use on every project out there but i think there is a time and a place where you just want to get that type of fabric that you get from two strands of more hair or even two strands of lace weight i'm working on a project right now that's got um that uses two strands of lace weight yarn and i've done one last summer the zimkita top i also used two strands of lace weight yarn and the fabric is amazing i love it i love the look of it so i think there is a place for two strands of yarn without necessarily just doing it for the sake of doing it and on those occasions where i really want to create a certain type of fabric i love working with two strands of yarn and then the last one is i don't like knitting in public i do it sometimes and I knit quite a bit in the car, but I, I don't really consider that knitting in public because I'll just be alone in the car or there'll be my husband or my, and my kids. So I don't like knitting in public because people start asking how much it costs for me to make stuff for them. And sometimes people start suggesting that I should sell my projects or my products to certain companies so I can make some money from my... So there's, there's a lot of conversations that I don't enjoy around my knitting, um, particularly with people who have no idea of what it takes to knit a sock or what it takes to just knit anything really. So I, I, I prefer not to knit in public because of that. Although I do it sometimes when I'm going to places where you have to queue and sit there for a long time. I've noticed that it works well to sit there and knit and put my... Um, earphones on and knit so that no one disturbs me but uh, it's mainly about the conversations around knitting that I just don't want to take part in sometimes there are times when I'm cool with sitting there knitting and talking to people about knitting but most of the time I just would rather not so I don't really enjoy knitting in public even though I do it quite a lot on school runs and when my kids are out playing or we're in the park or anything I still do it because I'll just be sitting there on my own. But most of what I'm talking about sitting in public is usually when I'm maybe at the doctor's office or in a queue somewhere where you end up striking a conversation with other people. It's a lot trying to tell people that knitting takes so much time, it's not worth it to knit stuff for sale. So yeah, these are all the 10 uh, unpopular knitting opinions of mine. I hope you'll share yours below because I'd love, love, love to read them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.